Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to show you something that you are going to be using very often if you start on a programming path, and that is if-else statement. So what is if-else statement? Well, if statement is something that is used when you want to execute part of your code, so block of your code, conditionally, which means not always, but only in a certain situation. And then if you add else block to that, that else block is going to be executed otherwise. So in the situation where your if block is not executed, your else is going to be executed. So let me explain that to you in a simple example. Here I have opened my Visual Studio and let's quickly paste an exercise that we are going to do in this tutorial. And this, that is this task here. So let's say that our user has to enter a number, a whole number, integer number, and then after that, our program has to check whether that number is even or odd and has to write out that to our user. So how we are going to solve this problem here? Well, I'm going to explain this to you using diagrams because I believe that that is the best way for you to understand this if you haven't used this if else statement before. And then what we are going to do after we understand those diagrams, well, we are literally going to just translate that diagram into our C++ code. So let me open my tool. So here I have opened a tool that I'm going to be using for drawing diagrams. It's called blank diagram. You can use whatever tool you want. You can use even a paint or a pen and paper if you want. That will work as well. So here I'm going to draw the flow chart of our program. So how our program is going to be executed. Now let me add first here this shape and we are going to say that th this is going to be the start of our program. So I'm going to write out start and this indicates our main function. Let's say the first line of our main function. So here our program starts. And then as we said in our task, in our exercise, our user has to enter an integer number. And the shape that we are going to be using for that is this shape here. So let me put this shape here and I'm going to write a text inside and I'm going to say int number. So this shape here indicates that our user is going to enter some data in our program. And why I'm using this shape? Because it looks like this. It looks like a funnel. So you can clearly visualize that something has to enter inside that shape. So something has to be inputted in your program. So I'm going to use this shape for that. And then I'm going to say that our user has to enter an integer number, which I'm going to call number. So that variable I'm going to call number. And let's quickly add this arrow so that we know that this is the flow of our program. So after it has started, our user enters a number. And then after that, what we have to do is our program has to decide whether that number that user has entered is even number or odd number. So how we are going to do that? Well, the shape that I'm going to be using for that decision, let me find it. Well, it is this shape here. So this diamond shape. And as you can see, it says decision on it. So that's the shape that we are going to be using. And inside this shape here, I'm going to write a condition. So as you can see, our program flows this way. And after it comes here, as you can see, it has one entry point and then it, it can have multiple, multiple flows that it can go to, depending on this condition that we are going to put inside here. But how we are going to decide whether that number that our user has entered is even or odd. Let me very quickly open my Visual Studio once more. It is here. And let me show you something. I want to introduce you to an operator that is called modulo and that is used to show what is the remainder of dividing two whole numbers. So I'm going to write out C out. And then what I'm going to write out is, let's say, 2 modulo 2. So this operator here gives you the remainder of dividing these two numbers. And in this situation, we are expecting to see a zero because two divided by two is one. And then what remains after that operation is zero. And that what remains should be, should be shown when we use this operator here. 
So if I run my program, you can see that we have gotten the expected result. So we have gotten zero here. But let me show you what happens if I enter, for example, five. Well, what we are going to get is one because five divided by two is going to be two. And then that one that remains, we can get using this operator. And you see that it gives us the expected result. So five modulo two is equal to one. So this operator here is what we are going to be using to determine whether our user has entered even number or odd number. Because when we get the result of modulating two numbers, when our result is one, that means that our user has entered odd number. And if we get zero as a result of this operation, that means that our user has entered even number. So I'm going to switch again to my diagram. And then inside this decision here, we are going to be writing, we are going to write this condition here. So I'm going to say number modulo two is equal to zero. So what this means, it means that after our program has started and our user has entered the number that he wants, an integer number, we are coming to a decision point where we have to decide whether this number that he has entered after you modulate it with zero, whether it's a, a zero remainder or some other remainder. So in this situation, when this is zero, we are going to execute a certain part of code. And then let me add very quickly, oh, I'm impressed. It already has this yes inside it. And then we also have this no on this other line. So in this situation where this results as operation that is true, we are going to execute this part code of here. So I'm going to add another shape, which I cannot see, but let me use this shape once more, and I'm only going to rotate this shape like this. And I'm going to delete this text, and what we are going to be using this shape here for is to indicate that we are going to output something from our program. So it looks like this which is clearly a visual of something is going to be outputted from it. So it is just reverse of this shape here, this funnel shape. And then inside this shape, let me write a text, which is going to be, um, let's say that in the case that this here results as a yes, as a true operation. So our number, when it's modulated by two, it gives a zero remainder we are going to say that that number is even number. So we are going to write that out to our user. And then in the situation where this here results as a no, so as an operation that is false, let me write out that here. And I'm going to say to our user, so I'm going to write out to my user that he has entered odd number. And let's just join this here like this. Okay, so our user enters a number, then we decide if that number modulated by two gives us zero. And if yes, we are going to write out to our user that that is an even number. If no, we are going to write out to our user that that number is odd number. And this is here really our program. What I'm going to add is Let's say that after this, our program is going to stop. So I'm going to, just to say here that this is the end of my program like this. And let's add one more stop of this flow here. So in both of these situations, after we have, and after we have outputted to our user, the result of this program, our program is going to stop. And this here really like these two stop points look a bit ugly to me. So what I'm going to do instead of this, I'm going to delete this. You could have as well left it like this, like, like it was before. But what I'm going to add, I'm going to add one more of these diamond shapes, only this time it's going to be smaller. And I'm going to say that in this situation, it is going to be used only to say that this decision here, this, this decision flow is going to be joined in this point here. So like this, I'm going to say whatever has happened, whether this block of code or this block of code, it has come to an end here. And then after that, from here, I'm going to say 
now my program is going to stop like this and this uh, let me remove this yes and this is going to be the flow chart of our program so our program starts then our user enters integer number then we decide whether that number modulated by 2 is going to give us 0 if yes we execute this else we execute this so if this is no and then we come to this which joins our two pads and then we can say that our program has ended and now let's translate this to our code here I have opened both my Visual Studio and also I have exported this diagram so that we can translate it literally. We can look at this diagram and then translate that into code. So now I'm going to delete all of this that we have written inside our Visual Studio and I'm going to look at this picture and just translate it into C++ commands. So the first, this first shape here says that user is going to enter integer number inside our program and we are going to call that variable a number so I'm going to say int number and then this here this funnel shape really translates into C in command so user enters something inside our program and that is C in command and I'm going to say that user is going to enter a number before this, I would like to add one more information to our user so that he knows what he should enter. You could have as well put that to our diagram, but I didn't want it to make that diagram crowded, so I didn't. But what we are going to add here is C out and then say, please enter full number like this. So we write out a message to our user and after that our user, as you can see here, enters integer number. We had also to declare this int number variable because you can enter the value only for variables that you have previously declared. And then after that our program comes to this decision point. And how we can represent this decision inside our code is using if statement. So we are going to write here if and then I'm going to put this condition here inside these parentheses. So I'm going to say if number modulo 2 equals 0. This here is operator of equal. So whether this side is equal to this side. Since only one of these, so like this, this operator here is used to assign value to a variable. So that was already taken. So this here, two of these signs are used to check equality of these two sides. So whether this is equal to this. And then what I'm going to say, as you can see from my diagram here, we check this condition here. And if this condition is true, if this condition is yes, we are going to execute a certain block of code. And that is this code here. And how you indicate a block of code in your C++ is using these braces here like this. So this is your block of code that is going to, to be executed in this yes situation. And then in case that this no here happens, so in case that this results as false, you are going to execute another block of code and we represent that block of code using else statement. So we are going to say if this here is true, execute one block of code else if this here is false execute another block of code so here what our if makes us do well it says that we only have to write out to our user that he has entered even number because this shape here as you can see it looks like this and it represents that something should be outputted from your program so we are going to use for that our c out command so c out you have entered even number so like this and let's add end line so in case that this here results as true we are going to output to our user that he has entered even number else if this here results as false we are going to output to our user let me copy this like this and we are going to change that only to odd so in case that this here results as false, we are going to output you have entered odd number. 
So either this here is going to be executed or this here, depending on this condition. And you can see that from diag diagram clearly. So when your program comes to this decision point, it checks this condition. And if the answer is true or yes, it is going to execute this. Else, if the answer is no, it is going to execute this. And then after that, it really just joins these two flows and then that is the that is the stop point of your program so we can write here c out thanks bye okay let's say that that is the last line of our program you don't i haven't put this on on my diagram i okay so i'm going to run my program now and as you can see it says Please enter a whole number, so this line here, and if I enter, for example, 8, it is going to come to this line here, and it is going to modulate our 8 with 2, and if the result is 0, which it is, it is going to execute this line here, and write out you have entered even number. Oh, thanks. We are missing an S here. And then it writes out thanks by. And let me add an S here. Okay, and if I run my program again, as you can see, it asks me, asks me again to enter a number. And this time I'm going to enter 5, which we know that is an odd number. It says you have entered an odd number because it has come to this decision point here. It has tried to modulate 5 with 2, and the result of that was not 0. So it has not executed this, but it has executed this else statement and it has written you have entered odd number as you can see here and then this thanks by okay so i hope that you have understood this and if you like me to use these diagrams to explain some more code that we are going to be using you can write that in the comments down below and i'm going to try to use more of these diagrams because i know that some people understand it better when there is a visual representation of your code i was one of those people when i first started learning programming so if you find it easier to understand when i use these diagrams i'm going to be using that so thanks for watching this video make sure to like it if you find it any helpful and also to subscribe to my channel and i'm going to see you in my next video